among the 100,000 spectators at the 1932 Olympic Games in Los Angeles was Glenn Morris, 20-year-old Colorado State student with a strong yen for athletics. The 400-meter race gave Morris his greatest thrill. At college, he was considered hot stuff in this event, and so, inspired by the achievements of great athletes, Glenn began to sizzle with the idea of running in the next Olympic Games. Back on the farm at Simla, Colorado during the summer months, Glenn took up road work in a big way. That is, when he wasn't pitching hay or plowing a field. A born athlete, his agility amazed everyone, including the family cows. <coughs> Ditches and fences meant nothing in his life. Watch this. Not bad, what? He had so much energy that when his mom put him to work on the ice cream freezer, he actually smiled. Fancy that. At college, Morris worked at 35 cents an hour to pay for his tuition, but he still found time to practically haunt the athletic field. Under the watchful eye of the coach, his practice disclosed improvements in stride, endurance, and speed. One day, a conceited high hurdle champ kind of got under Glenn's skin. Maybe he was a wee bit jealous of the hurdler. Anyhow, he decided to have a go at him. What's this, country boy, stepping out with me? Ho, 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 are we laughing? Get set? Go! And so the champ made Glenn look like a romantic snail, but not for long. Look at that kid move up. They're neck and neck. Neckers? A dead heat with the champ. Say, what would the guy do in the hurdles after some real training? Well, that did it. From here on, hurdling was the word for Morris, but definitely. Then came the day of the big AAU National Championships. But after many months of hard, patient training, the ambition of Glenn Morris to become a hurdler in the Olympics fell in the dust of his opponent's heels. Beaten, dejected, Glenn realized that as a specialist in the 400-meter hurdles, he was hopelessly outclassed. Morris then discovered that what the country needed more than a good five-cent cigar was a good decathlon man for the Olympics. The decathlon, that meant competing in ten events. The 400-meter race, the broad jump, the 100-meter race, the high jump, 1,500-meter race, the pole vault, the 110-meter hurdle, shot put, the discus, and the javelin throw. Could he perfect them in less than a year and compete in the Olympic decathlon? Well, you couldn't rule a guy out for trying. A broomstick served his purpose in studying the grip for pole vaulting. While Glenn was a pretty good all-round athlete, still there were some events he had to learn from scratch. Came the day when our ambitious one tried application of expert theories expounded in the book. A day he'll never forget. Hey! Where am I? What hit me? Oh, let's see that book. Hmm, maybe I'd better stick to hurdling. Ah, but you couldn't keep this cookie down. Before long, he was leaping in a large and lusty manner. In fact, he was vaulting with gusto. Oh, ever so much gusto. Here was a guy who didn't worry so much about form as he did about results, a kid with a great ambition. Not always the personification of poetry in motion, but a lad who grasped fundamentals quickly and applied his fine natural physical coordination and power. The answer was found in his score sheets. Back on the farm, Glenn cleared 20-foot ditches. Broad jumping was cream on his athletic berries and dust in his athletic puss. Mastering the javelin throw, Glenn Morris polished off a campaign of patient study and hard work. He was ready for the tryouts as a decathlon entrant. This javelin, incidentally, seems to be trucking. In hurling that sticker, however, Glenn had injured a leg muscle. It was more serious than he suspected. A few days before the Olympic preliminaries, the doctor warned Morris that his participation might result in permanent injury. But Glenn had decided to take the chance. 
Here was his big opportunity to qualify for the Olympic finals. The confidence of his coach was justified in the very first event, the 100 meter. But that terrible pain in his leg, it looked like Glenn could never go on for the next event. Suffering intense pain, he was again warned of the danger in continuing. It looked bad for Glenn. Expert hands helped to lessen the pain, and with the announcement of the broad jump, Glenn was determined to make a stab at it as long as he could stay on his feet. Again he came through, but how long could the boy take it? And so, fighting under a painfully dangerous handicap that might cripple him for life, Morris managed to keep in the running. Would he make it? The hard way. Then, after a nerve-straining, body-punishing race, Glenn Morris finished out in front, and the tryouts were over. The result? His first goal achieved. He had qualified for the finals. And how did Glenn do at the finals? The headlines told the story. Morris breaks world's decathlon record. He had made the Olympic team, but how? And so Glenn Morris sailed for Berlin. Here, competing against the world's champions on track and field in association with teammates that represented the flower of America's athletic youth, the great ambition of a Colorado country boy was realized. And now, with nine of the decathlon events completed, Glenn Morris leads with 7,305 points. As the 10th event, the 1,500-meter race, is about to start, the judges make an announcement. Attention, please. An important announcement. Our figures show that if Morris can run 1,500 meters in 4 minutes and 32 seconds, he will become the greatest decathlon athlete in Olympic Games history. Boy, what an opportunity. Though dog tired and realizing that he never ran that distance and that speed in his life, Glenn Morris goes to it. Get set. Come on, Morris. Will he make it? Straining every nerve and muscle in the long, grueling contest for a chance to hang up a new record. Pouring it on as he never did before. Out in front, he wins, but what is his time? Did he establish a new world's record? Glenn Morris' time, four minutes and 33 and two tenths seconds. Morris did not establish a new decathlon record. Glenn had lost out by a fraction over one second. Excited discussion among the judges. And here, my friends, is what actually happened. Correction. An error has been made in calculating the tabulation sheet. Morris has piled up more points in the decathlon than any athlete ever competing in the Olympic Games. And so, Glenn Morris of Simla, Colorado, was acclaimed the world's greatest decathlon champion. Mm -hmm.